Okay, we're back and we're ready to start our game from April 6, 1977, San Diego at Cincinnati. A um, couple things. Uh, down here you'll notice I have the line score um, that uh, you can toggle on and off. This is a personal preference. I like to have a line score so I can just kind of see what's going on in the game. You can turn that off, on and off here. Just toggle the switch and then it comes on and off. Uh, there are a couple other things, pitch count, which we don't really use. This quick score screen, um, this is something I used to use quite a bit um, when I first started out with, with ball score. Uh, you can score things uh, using this little count, this little, these little buttons here, uh, single, double, triple, various scoring plays you can do right from this little screen here. Um, you can also do the scoring plays from here where we can record single, double, triple, home run, hit by pitch, various fielders choices. Uh, we can also record outs this way, uh, the batter's out, just however you, you know, that'll pop up another pop-up screen which you can then input who gets to put out an assist, sacrifice fly, sacrifice hits, double, grounded into double plays, lined into double plays, fly out into double plays. And then also we have these runner screens, uh, runner steals second, steals third, uh, advances on a wild pitcher, pass ball, and then caught stealing, second or third, and then also if there were some type of fielder's choice. Uh, so we have those options there. Uh, you can also use your uh, F keys. You would have to have that set up in your in your uh, ball score properties to do that. Um, I usually use the keyboard spacebar, which does quite a quite a bit of uh, can do quite a bit of very simple scoring um, which I'll, I'll talk you through that um, but again you have several options as to how you want to record your outs and your hits um, from the quick score screen um, to these buttons up here in your toolbar to using the keyboard uh, the keyboard is is probably the quickest for me and once you learn um, you know the, the uh, keyboard stuff it's it's very very simple so uh, I am going to actually score the actual game as opposed to actually rolling dice and playing in the game um, just to you know for video purposes just for quick quick uh, play this way we don't have to worry about the dice roll not sure that my um, software will pick up the dice rolls correctly anyway so uh, and for those of you that are non Apple players you might get a little annoying as to watching a 44 or 7 pop up and you not know what that is. So um, I pulled up on the other screen uh, the play-by-play -play from this game, so I'll just be entering from there. Uh, Gene Richards let off with a base hit, and we can record that in ball score by hitting the A button for the batter reaching first base safely, and it'll pop up this window, um, which shows the various... Uh, we can either click these with with our mouse or we can uh, click or hit the red number on the keyboard in this case he singled so we're gonna hit one for single and we see it's placed Richards on first base with the single um, now it looks like he stole a base so on our keyboard we would hit R you could also click this R you could also click this steals second base runner on first and steals second base however you want to do it I'm going to hit the R button which pulls this up and we will hit the number two for him to steal second base and now you see the ball score has put that he moved from second base on the stolen base he singled and then moved to second on the stolen base okay uh, Mike champions the batter he pops up to second base so we're going to hit him space bar we hit P for pop-up and then the fielder was the second baseman four and it'll pop up this uh, box to show how we want to record the put out and it shows put out to second base so that's all we need so we can click enter for OK um, what and now it's gonna ask us well what happened to the base runner did the base runner do anything in this case he did not he stayed at second base, so we can click enter for OK. OK, that brings Dave Winfield to the plate. He also pops up to second base. So we'll 
space bar pop up second base and hit enter and hit enter okay George Hendricks the batter and he walks so we're gonna hit B to record the ball and remember if you remember from the first video when we were setting up our properties um, we set it up to where we only have to hit the B once and it will automatically record the walk uh, if he strikes out we hit the S but we'll get to that later I'm sure somebody strikes out in this game uh, so now we have runners at first and second and Gene Tennis is the batter and he hits a fly ball to right field so we're going to hit space bar F for fly out 9 for right field and record to put out and we're good it will now flip our scorebook over to Cincinnati um, so it's automatically going to do that again. That was one of the properties we set to where it would automatically flip after the third out. Now you'll also notice up here we have these um, the batter stats and the pitcher stats. Obviously this is the first game of the season so there aren't any stats. Um, but we'll see as the game progresses that they actually do record some stats. So uh, Pete Rose is the batter and he is going to hit a ground ball to short. So space bar G for ground out and hit six and it will record a six three put out um, now if you happen to hit the wrong number uh, say it was actually a, a um, ground out to second you can easily change that you can just tab over to that where it says shortstop and hit four and it will change that um, if you need to record additional uh, put outs or errors this is this is where you would do that so Six, click OK, or you can just hit Enter. OK should be the default. Um, Ken Griffey's up, and he's going to get a single. So we again we hit A, one for single. Uh, and now <laughs> Griffey goes to second on a balk. Hey, I can't make this stuff up, so this is kind of nice that it's including all these things that you want to you want to see how it happens. So we'll get pinch hitters and. And uh, changing pitchers and different things like that later on in this game. So uh, to record the balk, this is an action for the runner. So we hit R for the runner, and we get this pop up, and we can record various things. Um, we can just hit B for balk. So we'll do that, and he's going to advance to second base, and we're going to click OK. And again, you see the ball score shows that he moved to second base on a balk. Okay, Joe Morgan's a batter, and he hits a foul out to first base. And how do we record foul outs? Well, let's try the space bar, see what that gets us. And sure enough, foul outs are right down here. Uh, we can hit the X for foul out, and then who caught it? In this case, it was the first baseman. And we record that, and the runner didn't advance, so we click OK. And now it records that out. George Foster is the next. He hits a fly ball to left. So space bar F7, enter. And it'll flip our scorebook for us. Um, Mike Ivey leads off the second inning for San Diego. And he hits a double. Something new. All right. A for a hit. A for a hit. And two for a double. Okay, so he's at second base. Um, Raiders next. Now this is now this is an interesting play. He hits a ground ball to the pitcher, and they get Ivy out um, at third base. And Raider, so Raider gets to first base on the fielder's choice. Um, there's a couple of different ways we can record this. Since the runner makes it to first base, or the, I'm sorry, the batter made it to first base, we can hit A, and then. We'll see, we can either hit F for fielder's choice or X for predefined fielder's choice. This X button for the predefined fielder's choice, I love this button because it is, it basically can record any type of fielder's choice. We hit the X and it pops up this. So here we, we have the runner going out at third and it was from pitcher to third. So we would record that one five. And here's the runner screen showing that the runner is out at third base. 
So we can click OK on that. And there's the put out and assist. And there's Doug Rader sitting at first base. Very simple. Um, again, those predefined fielder's choices, that button works really well because it just about covers everything. Even if it doesn't cover the particular play, if there were multiple assists on that play, caught in a rundown or something, you can go to the predefined, go ahead and put in 1-5 um, or whatever, and then you can always add the additional assists to that. So um, that works out pretty well. So now we got a runner at first and one out and Allman. So Allman strikes out. Okay, so here we hit our S for strikeout. It's going to pop up these various strikeout situations. Um, we can record a normal strikeout uh, swinging, normal strikeout looking, bunt foul third strike, and all these other drop third strike scenarios, um, which is it's, it's very helpful to have all those right in one place. Um, one thing I like to do, if it's just a strikeout uh, in APA 13, I would record it as a normal strikeout swinging. If it's a strikeout for one of the letters, uh, one of the strikeout letters in X, Y, or K, X, Y, whatever, in APA, then I record that as a strikeout looking. <clears throat> it's just something I can use to, to maybe go back at some point and look through my replay and say, <clears throat> well, how many times did that X or Y have an effect on things? Excuse me, I'm losing my voice from all this talking. Um, so then we can record the put out by the catcher. We're good there. Randy Jones is the batter and he strikes out also. So he actually struck out looking if we care. So we can click that, click OK. And we'll see when that scorebook flips back over it how the strikeout looking is recorded a little bit differently on the book. But it's semantics, really doesn't matter. Okay, Dave Concepcion is the batter. He's going to double. So we hit A2 for a double. Dan Dreesen uh, is now up, and Concepcion steals third. So that's a runner action. So we go to our screen, and we hit three for steals third. If he's caught stealing, we would have used the six for caught stealing third base. Now we've recorded his stolen base. Uh, Concepcion strikes out. I'm sorry, Dreesen strikes out. And I think I just hit the wrong buttons. So we hit that S again. There's the normal strikeout. Okay, now Bill Plummer's the batter, and he is going to get a single, and Concepcion scores. So we hit our A, one for single. Here's our runner activity, what happened to him. Uh, it automatically shows that the runner scores. Usually ball score is going to advance the runners as many bases as the hit was. If you need to, you know, if he needs, um, if he's out at home or, or if he's at second base and ball score only shows him going to third, you can just click, you know, the next one and say, okay, he scores or he stays at third or whatever happens to him. So you can do all that from this screen. So he scores, we click OK. And we see now his box is colored in. Again, you see also this runner advancement. How did he get to third? Well, he stole third. How did he score? Well, he scored on a single. And we look in Plummer's um, box here, and we see this little green dot. It means he got an RBI there. So Cincinnati leads one to nothing. Um, this next one, uh, oh, good, another, another interesting one, Geronimo reaches on an air by the left fielder. Um, so he reached first base, so we go to the A screen, and we can see these various um, single plus second on air, no, that's not what happened, single plus third on air, single scores on air, no, no, none of that. He reached first base on an air here, so we can hit R. And what happened to the other runner that was on first? Well, he went to second, so he stopped at second. So that's where ball score is showing him. So we can click OK on that. And now it's going to bring up this um, uh, pop-up box for us to record the error. So we got E7. And we click OK. And that has now been recorded. OK. Uh, and now here's...
there's a neat, another fun play here. Plummer is caught stealing third base. You kind of wonder what the heck he was thinking. I'm guessing Fryman probably missed a bunt, and uh, and Plummer was caught a little far off the base here. So that's a runner action. So we can click R, and he is caught stealing third base, which is a six. Right here is the six. So we just hit R6. And catcher third, we'll click enter. So now that's the second out. Um, and then Fryman, who's still at the plate, grounds out to third. Space bar, G for ground out, five for the third baseman. And we're good. Scorebook flips. You'll note here, um, Cincinnati's got a run in the second inning. Uh, also note here, we see these stats have been updated. So Gene Richards is now one for one. He's batting a thousand on the season. Woody Fryman's pitched two innings, given up two hits, and uh, it's balls, balls, and strikes, um, pitch count, things like that. So, alrighty, uh, let's continue on with the game here as we go to the third inning. I know it's a little bit boring, but I want to show you just how a normal game is scored. Um, Here's another interesting one. I don't think I've seen this before. Uh, ground out to the pitcher unassisted. So we'll see how ball score handles that. Hit the space bar. Ground out. We're going to hit pitcher. And here we're going to get an assist from the pitcher and a put out on the first baseman. That's not what actually happened, so we're going to change that to put out the pitcher. And we're going to get rid of the first baseman's put out. Blank one and go to the blank. And you know, we're not scoring that as a double play. I know when I change that to put out, it automatically click the scores double play. Um, we don't want to do that. You want to make sure you unclick that or uh, you can get rid of the other put out first and then change it to put out. And it wouldn't do that automatically. So just be careful on that. Um, click OK. I think that's the first time I've ever actually scored that play. Um, okay. Uh, champion's up, and he doubles. So A2. We've seen doubles before. Dave Winfield's up, and he draws a walk. So we hit the B button to record the walk. George Hendrick is up, and he also walks. And so now we have the bases loaded with one out. Gene Tennis, the batter. And Tennis singles to left, Champion and Winfield score, Hendrick stops at second base. So A, one for singles. And okay, here we get to play with the runner advancement screen a little bit. Shows Champion scoring, which of course he's at third base, so he would. Uh, Winfield, ball score automatically, or by default, is saying he's going to advance one base. Well, in this case, he advanced two, so we can click, move that down, click I for scores. And Hendrick did stop at second. So we got the runners where we need them. We click OK. You'll notice the two runs have scored. And also the two RBIs recorded for tennis. OK. Ivy fouls out. Base bar X for foul out. Four for second baseman. Here. And the runners did not advance. Raiders, the next batter, who flies out to center field. We go to the bottom of the third, and the Reds, Pete Rose, grounds out. Space bar G, four. Ken Griffey, he doubles to right. Okay. Uh, Morgan hits a fly ball to center. Runner does not advance. Space bar F, eight. Put out in center field. Griffey stays. Foster is the batter and he triples. So here's a new one. A. Of course it's recorded pretty much the same as a single double, except that now we hit three for triple. And runner shows a score, so we're good there. Click OK. And we've recorded the RBI for Foster and the run scored for Griffey. Uh, 
flips he owns next batter he strikes out actually at this point it shows that it got away from the the uh, catcher so I'm gonna have a dropped third strike batter out of first because it was a drop third strike um, you know it's possible the runner could have scored before the out was reported and we'll click OK on that ok and we're ready for the fourth inning Allman grounds out to third space bar G5 Jones is the next batter and he actually draws a walk. So we hit the B button to record the walk. Um, Gene Richards grounds out, grounds out into a force out, um, third to second. Again, that's the A button and then the X button for the predefined fielder's choice, which brings up the predefined fielder's choice screen, which we record out at second. By four, and then the runner screen pops up. We verify, record to put out. Uh, let's see, Mike Champion. He is going to single. Um, on the single, if it's a, a bunt single or an infield single, you can also record that. Um, also on the doubles, if the ground rule doubles, you can record that just some additional scoring things you can do there. I normally don't, um, but it is possible to do that. And Richards advanced to second on the single. Um, so we got runners for first and second with two out. And Dave Winfield draws a walk. Load the bases again. Ryman in trouble pretty much all day today. Uh, and Hendrick grounds out into a force out. A X. And the runner's out at second, six to four. Okay. Um, okay, here's here's an interesting thing that ball ball score does, which is correct scoring. Notice the runner's on third. It shows it's staying at third and the runner second staying at second with the runner first being out at second. If it does this differently, um, it, you know, if it if the default was to advance all the runners, then this run would actually score. You don't want that. So um, ball score does take care of that and you know holds the runners on the fielder's choice that ends the inning. So if there had been only two outs and the fielder's choice put it out at second, these runners would be showing advancing. So uh, it does recognize that this is the third out, and so it has altered. The, the scoring from the default on that so we do like that when that happens okay bottom of the fourth Dreesen pop fly space bar P4 I'm going to try to speed up play a little bit here uh, plumber with a single to right and then Cesar Geronimo hits a two run homer um, so that's an A and a four for home run and shows the runner scoring and we've recorded that. Uh, Fryman grounds out to short, space bar G6 and Pete Rose grounds out to short also, space bar G6. This is the batter. He flies to right. Space bar F9. Mike Ivy hits a home run. And Raider grounds out. Space bar G5. And Bill Allman pops out to the shortstop. Space bar P6. Okay, bottom of the fifth. I'm going to keep this going because in the next 
innings, we get some pinch hitters and, and some uh, pitchers replacing uh, uh, new pitchers, I guess I should say, some relievers coming into the game. So I definitely want to get into that. So uh, Griffey gets his third hit of the game. Um, ooh, interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay. Um, now here's an interesting thing. They actually picked off Griffey at first base. But the first baseman let the ball get away from him, and Griffey made it to second. So I don't think I've ever scored this play before in ball score. So we're gonna play around with it a little bit to see if how it how we can make this work out. So we go to the runner screen. He was um, picked off, which would be K. So he actually advances to second base. Not sure how this will handle this, but we're gonna click OK. No, well, OK. It didn't allow us to record the error, so we're gonna actually undo that. And we're gonna go back to the runner screen, and we're just gonna record an error. So he advances to second base. Because we're on this next batter, it doesn't allow us to record who made the error. We actually go back to the cell, click the E button to record an error. Um, runner reach second base on error. We click OK. And now it will allow us to record that error. So that's just something you've got to watch out for. Um, if it's not something that was generated from the batter, you actually have to go back to where the where the error occurred. Um, that doesn't happen all that often, but it does. It does happen occasionally. And there we just showed how to record it properly. So Morgan's still a batter. Um, and it looks like, that's interesting, uh, ground out second to pitcher. They didn't give a sacrifice fly, so it wasn't a bunt. Or I'm sorry, a sacrifice hit. So it wasn't a bunt. So we record space bar G, and it went to second base. Now here, we want to change that put out to the pitcher. Very simple to do that. Just tab through to get to this last where it was first baseman, change it to pitcher, click OK. And the runner did go to third on that play. Runners at third with one out. Um, and Foster is the next batter. He actually hits a sacrifice fly. So we're going to record an out by hitting the O button. Again, you can also hit these buttons up here. Um, you can actually, in this case, you could have actually clicked the SF to record the sacrifice fly. I like to use the keyboard myself though. So. Um, this brings up the batter out at first uh, options. Um, in this case, we want to record it as a sacrifice fly. And there are all these other things we can record from this batter out screen. Um, again, if you don't want to use the space bar, if you just want to use the batter out on any typical ground ball or anything, just hit O. This menu will pop up and you can record all these various outs. Um, very, very simple. Um, I've just used the space bar, so that's just me. If you want to use the O button to record outs, you can do that. So we record the sacrifice fly, the runner scores. Uh, this was to center field, so we change it to put out to center. We've recorded our sacrifice fly. Foster with the RBI on that. Oh, here's the other thing. Um, this was, it's determined, uh, since we should have had Griffey out at first base on the pickoff, that it's an unearned run. Ball score doesn't always catch that. Um, if the batter reaches on an error, it's always going to mark him as an unearned run, uh, which it should. But in a case like this, doesn't really know, it's not smart enough to know 
hey, that's an unearned run in this case. So we have to go back, go back to the cell that the run scored, and you can click this UE button, and it'll put X through that box to to note that it's an unearned run. Okay, so that's another thing with ball score that you do have to be aware of earned and unearned runs. Make sure you're getting those right. Um, usually the only one it's going to know for sure is when the batter uh, reaches on an error and that run should always be unearned. Um, but in situations where you know the error occurs with two outs and succeeding run score after the third out would have been recorded, it doesn't know that. So you're going to have to go back and do that. But as we saw, it's a very simple process and you can actually just toggle this between an earned or unearned run. So, there's that. Uh, Concepcion, singles to center. Two, one. And he steals second base. So that's, again, the runner screen. And he steals second. Uh, and then, Dreesen hits a ground out to the first baseman unassisted. That's well, let's play with this out. So I'm going to click out, and it's a ground out to three unassisted, which we can actually use the M button then, and that records that out. Okay. All right. Um, well, Randy Jones is due to lead off in the top of the sixth, but since we're trailing five to three, San Diego actually used a pinch hitter in this case. So we're going to do a pinch hitter. And the way we do that in ball score is we use this um, button right here, pinch hitter. You can also do pinch runner, uh, new pitcher. So those are the three you really need to know. Uh, so we click PH and who our pinch hitter? It's going to be Bobby Valentine. He's all the way near the bottom as the roster is alphabetized. And then also we select the slot, the batting slot that we want him in. If you'll notice on the scorebook under Randy Jones, you have three slots under Randy Jones directly and then another four slots. So each batting order position has eight slots. So uh, in this case, Randy Jones, there's nobody under him. He was the only player in the game so far. So now we're going to select the pinch hitter and that will be Bobby Valentine. So we selected the player, we've selected what slot we want him in, we click OK. And now you'll see a couple things. Bobby Valentine has been inserted as a pinch hitter. That's good. And Ball Score has put in a new batter marker to designate that, okay, anything prior to this new batter marker was Randy Jones. So uh, we see up here Bobby Valentine is also the new pitcher. If I go back, if I were to click this cell right before the new batter marker, it shows that Randy Jones was the batter. So just a little bit, you can you can use that um, if you're not sure. If, if this doesn't show who the correct batter is, then you know you need to play with these new batter markers. Um, there are instances where you need a double and sometimes even a triple new batter marker. Um, and that would happen kind of hard to explain, so I'm not going to go into explaining it. But if, if you use multiple pitchers uh, or multiple pinch hitters uh, in a lineup slot, then you sometimes need to use a double or triple new batter marker. Um, but again, to make sure you got the right batter, click in the active cell and it should be the pinch hitter. And if it's not, then try adding a, a double new batter marker and you can do that. Go to this edit screen and you can insert a double new batter marker or a triple new batter marker. So in case you have to do that, I don't know if we'll have to do that in this game. I want to make sure that you see a situation. Um, well, I'm not sure we'll see the situation, I guess is what I should say. So I'm just trying to explain that now and I'm doing a really piss poor job of it, but such is life. Um, but again, to make sure you got the right batter, just click in that cell and make sure that that's, okay, yeah, that's Bobby Valentine. That's who I want up in this situation. So, um, unfortunately.
unfortunately for the Padres, Valentine flew out to left. So he didn't do anything. It's baseball at right? seven. Gene Richards drew a walk. And Mike Champion singled to the pitcher. So if we want, we could record that as an infield single. Just to see what ball score does. Richards went to second on the play. So we see single infield. So that's it. At this point, Sparky Anderson decided, hey, I've seen enough of this Fryman guy. Uh, I'm going to put in Pedro Bourbon. So we go to the NP or the new pitcher. And this will bring up all the Cincinnati Reds relievers. Uh, or actually, it brings up their whole roster, not just the relievers. Uh, so we put in Pedro Bourbon. He, it was not a double switch, so and this is a National League game in 1977, so we need to put his batting order position of ninth, and then we click OK. And now you'll see it put in a, a new pitcher marker right above uh, uh, the Dave Winfield scoring box here. And actually, if we go to reports and look at box score right now, Oops, I was going to pull that up over on my other screen. I'm not sure this will show up correctly um, on the software, but I'm looking at the box score right now, and we see Pedro Bourbon is in the game. Fryman pitched five and a third innings. So we'll close out of that. Okay, uh, so then Winfield grounded out on a force out short to third, so they got a fielder's choice and got the out of third, so that's going to be A. We're going to go to our predefined fielder's choice. We record the out at third, six to five. And we click OK. Showing the runner out at third, champion advanced to second. And record the assistant put out, and OK. OK. Um, Hendrick then got a single. The runners only advanced one base. So we're going to click OK. The bases are loaded, and Gene Tennis lines out to short. So it's base bar L for line out, and six in this case. Okay, and now um, ball scorer said, "Hey, you pinch hit for the uh, pitcher. You probably want to put in a new new pitcher at this time." So this is a reminder that pops up anytime you pinch hit for the pitcher or Generally, if you pinch hit for anybody, because if, uh, if you pinch hit for the second baseman, you may need to make a defensive change. So, uh, ball score just warning you that, hey, you've made it, you brought in a pinch hitter, you might need to change something. So, we do need to change something. We need to bring in Dave Tomlin as the new pitcher. And so, we go to new pitcher, bring in Dave Tomlin. He's batting ninth also. We did not do a double switch, so uh, then we click OK. And again, the new pitcher marker has been inserted. So Plummer's the batter. He grounds out. Uh, Geronimo strikes out. And Bourbon would be the batter. Um, but we're going to get a pinch hitter for him. It's going to be Ed Armbrister. So here we go with pinch hitter, Armbrister. And notice on the select slot, ball score has defaulted to the third, and that's good. That's where we want it. It's looking for the next open slot. So uh, it has done that correctly, so we click OK. And now we see Armbrister is a pinch hitter. We also got a, a new batter marker. Um, and we look and see, okay, good, Armbrister is the correct pinch hitter or the correct hitter at the plate. Um, so everything looks good. Armbrister grounds out. Okay, now it's warning us again saying, hey, Cincinnati did a, did a pinch hitter, um, so you're going to need to bring in a, a defensive substitute, in this case a new pitcher. So we click new pitcher, and they brought in Raleigh Eastwick. He's also batting ninth. So we click OK. And he 
just with this now in the game. Okay, so we get Mike Ivy, who's having a pretty good day, and he continues with the single. Uh, Doug Rader hits a pop out to second base. Ivy staying at first. And Allman hits into a 4 6 3 double play. Um, on the double plays, those are on the out menu, the batter out menu. So we hit O for the batter out menu. And in this case, we'd hit zero for a ground ball double play. And so we hit O and then zero. And this shows the various double plays we can record. Um, you'll notice these out here to the side. If we just hit, in this case, it was a. Um, Four six three double play. We can just hit four, and it will record the four six three double play. Otherwise, we have to click on the double play. But in this case, we can just go four, and it records those assists and putouts. And we click OK, and the double play has been recorded. Okay, we go on to the bottom of the seventh. Facing Dave Tomlin, who's still in the game. We see Tomlin's pitched an inning. Uh, Rose is the batter. He grounds out to second base. Ken Griffey grounds out to third base. Space bar G5. Morgan doubles to left. So now we got a runner at second. San Diego decides to make another pitching change. Victor Bernal, he's also batting ninth. So Foster at the plate. They're going to do an intentional walk of him. Okay, so we click the B button to record this intentional walk, and it didn't record it as an intentional walk. Um, you can set up a, a uh, ball score property to any time there's a walk that it will prompt you and ask you, was this an intentional walk? That gets to be kind of annoying because uh, you're not going to really need to do that very often. All we have to do to record the intentional walk is go back to Foster and right next to the unearned run is IBB. So we can toggle that as an intentional walk and it'll put an I in front of that. We move our cursor to the right to the next scoring cell and we're set to go. So. Seems kind of odd to bring in a relief pitcher to intentionally walk somebody, but what do I know? Uh, Concepcion's the next one, he lines out to left, so that's going to space bar L7. Okay. We go to the eighth inning. Okay, interesting thing here. Um, because we brought in uh, two pitchers within the last inning, uh, ball score has changed that from a single new batter marker, which is the red marker, to a double new batter marker, which is the green marker. So we see that the ball score was smart enough to know, hey, you know, you're gonna have you've changed pitchers multiple times, and we're actually now gonna bring in another pinch hitter. Uh, it's gonna be Jerry Turner. So let's go ahead and do that and see what happens here. So Jerry Turner, he's in the fifth slot in the batting order, fifth slot in, in this particular lineup position. Click OK. Okay, so our cell's in the right place, and Jerry Turner is the correct yeah. batter. So every, ball score handled everything perfectly there. Um, interesting to note, had Allman just hit into a fourth play and we would have done a pinch hitter here, we may have had to actually toggle a, a triple new batter marker there. But in this case, we didn't have to. But uh, eighth inning. Let's see, where am I at? Turner hits a fly ball to center. Uh, Richards walks. Hit the B button. Champion grounds into fielder's choice. So a X. And that was. Ah. Ah. Wrong thing. He actually grounded out with the runner advancing to second, so it's a space bar G4 to record the out at first. 
and then here we have to say, okay, the runner went to second. Okay, so the runner second went to out, and Winfield grounds out to second also. Okay, it's telling us, hey, you did a pinch hitter, you probably need to bring in a defensive player. In this case, it's a new pitcher again. It is Raleigh Finger. One thing um, you may you may do, um, especially if you're doing a, a later, a more recent uh, year's replay where there are multiple relief pitchers, um, you can put does not bat if if you're just going to put in a pinch hitter for that player anyway. Then he does not appear uh, in these lineup spots. It's possible, especially in a modern replay modern National League replay where you could very easily fill up all eight of these slots um, and then you have to do some manipulation if you you know run out of slots so um, if you know the pitcher is not going to bat you know, Pete Hable always recommended this that you hey I know that pitcher is not going to bat I'm just going to leave it as does not bat um, he doesn't show up in the in the box score that way it was always kind of one of those nitpicky things that annoyed me about it um, but it, you know it, you were saving a slot for just the hitters and people that were going to hit so you can do it that way um, I tend to always do this I tend not to do modern replays though so um, it's less likely that you'll run into it in a 1977 say I tend to use a lot of double switches when I play too so I tend not to overload that pitcher spot um, okay uh, Andreessen's in, he flies to the left, space bar F7, Plummer strikes out, and Geronimo strikes out. Okay, back to San Diego, Eastwick still in the game, Hendrick pops out, space bar P3. Tennis also space bar P3. So last out of the game, Mike Ivy flies out to center. Space bar F8. Okay. Um, ball score is detected. Hey, the home team's won. So um, it's telling us it's detected the end of the game. We're okay with that. We click OK. Hit N at the end of the game to record your ending game information. Um, in this case, we need to re show that Jones was a losing pitcher, Fryman the winner, uh, with Beastwick getting a save. Um, I'm going to go ahead and record or put in a location for this game. There we go, the Riverfront Stadium. Uh, and once we have that information in there, normally this location will be in there automatically um, but in this case it was not so uh, I'm gonna click OK oops 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 see I screwed up there Fryman the winning pitcher the save goes to Eastwick I had a, an inadvertently clicked win on both of those and it doesn't allow you to record two wins in a single game huh imagine that so we're good with that click OK uh, and now a couple, couple things I like to do before I export I like to click this little pinwheel button uh, to check to make sure my scorebook is in balance I know it probably already is because I don't see one of my sticky notes that's saying that it's not in balance but I still it's one of the things I've done since I've done this software almost 15 years ago now um, so I'll bring this up it brings up this balance score sheet saying the Cincinnati Reds balances correctly it lists out how it balances everything's good with that um, there are rare occasions where it could get out of balance um, and that's going to be through some weird 
runner left on base situation. Um, you should prop most likely it's going to be uh, balanced, but if it's not, remember to have that sticky note so that it pops up and you can see that right away and say, "Ooh, I must have screwed something up." Uh, so we click OK, and then I flip it over to San Diego. And do the same thing, and wow, they left 12 runners on base. Not good. And click OK. Okay, that's all done. I also normally will check the reports button and I will check the box score. Don't know if you'll be able to see. Okay, this pops up here. Uh, hopefully, you're able to see this. Um, this just shows, you know, uh, your typical box score for the game. Uh, I just like to look it over and make sure I don't have anything unusual. I especially like to check the pitchers to make sure that I've assigned the loss and the win. Um, if, for instance, you forget to hit that end button to assign the win and the loss, I, you know, ball score would let you export that with no decision given to either pitcher. So uh, make sure you hit that end button all the time after the game. Actually, the when it pops up that little um, warning to say it's detected the end of the game it if you actually read that message it says to hit the end button to record that information um, but we see all this information in the box score uh, all this wonderful information and everything looks good we got all of our pinch hitters and pitchers and everything looks the way it should so we're gonna close out of that and now I'm actually going to go to the file menu and I'm going to export directly to Ballstat the San Diego Padres scorebook. So the first time we're, we're doing this, as you'll notice, it's saying it's adding all of this, all of these players uh, because it doesn't have San Diego set up yet. Um, you know, it's saying it's exporting the San Diego Padres. It's exporting the team's opponent, which was Cincinnati, and it's exporting the Riverfront Stadium as the location for the Cincinnati home game. So that's why all of that is normally going to be there in the future. So in this case, we want to create the team. Uh, it's going to ask us for some information. San Diego. It's asking for a three-letter abbreviation. We do SD. I like to always put a three-letter abbreviation, so I always put San Diego National League don't have to do that. Uh, SDIN for Cincinnati. It's asking for home field for San Diego, which in 1977 was, I believe, Jack Murphy Stadium. That's what we're going to put for him. San Diego is in the National League West. Oops. I accidentally put American League West. We don't want that. Um, so once we have all that information, we click OK. See it it exported everything and now we go to Cincinnati and you'll notice it's already got the, the location is Riverfront Stadium it's saying Cincinnati it's saying it's going to add in the opponent and all of these players so we'll create this team all this information is now because we put it in for San Diego it recognizes all of this information so Cincinnati San Diego Riverfront Stadium's home, and that is also in the National League West. We click OK. It exports, and it now says we're done. Um, this this is a very important message. I want. I think this is where a lot of people can get screwed up with this software. Uh, it says if you are going to score another game, then you should exit, then restart ball score to reset all game variables. This is a very important game. I just I just found out found this out the hard way the other day when I was playing around with the software, um, and I, I stopped a game in the middle of a game um, and exited out and just set everything back up and, and tried to restart. What it does it doesn't always recognize unless you restart the software that it still thought it was in the same game that I had quit, and so. It, it led to some, you know, it already thought there were two outs in the inning when it was the leadoff batter. So 
make sure if you're going to score another game right away to exit out of the software and restart it because I can't emphasize that enough it, it's one of the little quirks of ball score that Pete was never able to quite figure out why it didn't um, reset everything the way it should have um, but it, it never did and it doesn't and it can lead to problems if if you don't restart so if you are going to score another game make sure you restart so you'll click OK and we're going to exit out and we're going to save it and we're done so thanks for your patience on this one this one's going to be a